Hello once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, and this time with a video dedicated to several uses of the dial indicator or test indicator on the Bridgeport Mill. There are probably hundreds of different possibilities and uses of test indicators on a Bridgeport Mill, and I'm just going to show you four of the basic ones that really everybody needs to know and would use pretty much in their daily work in a machine shop and I'm going to use these edge technology indicator holders and there's two different versions of these one is shank mounted and one has a clamp on it so I'll be using both of those for this demonstration so let's get started by sweeping in or tramming the head I made a video quite a while back showing how to use the pro tram also by edge technology and I may show that again as they have several different models, one quite a bit smaller than this. So I'd like to get a hold of one of those and demonstrate that for you. But these are rather expensive instruments compared to just using a standard test indicator in one of these holders. And the holders are more reasonably priced, typically in the $40 or $50 range. As you know, the head on a Bridgeport mill can be swiveled or tilted right to left and also it can be tilted in what we call the nodding position moving out and I'm not going to talk about that because that's already been uh, set on this and not all milling machines have that feature so let's just talk about tramming it from left to right how that's done and the importance of it now looking at the head from this angle, again you can see with this protractor that the head tilts from left to right and the other protractor here is nodding and we're not going to talk about that as I just mentioned but you can of course set it and everybody does simply with the zero mark there and for many purposes that's good enough but it doesn't really get it all that close and will probably still be a few thousandths off as I will demonstrate here momentarily. I'm going to exaggerate here a little bit just to emphasize the importance of having the head trammed. But if you're a degree or so off, but let's just say that we're 10 degrees off, what would happen as you're milling, your milling cutter would be moving across your work like this. You would not get a flat surface and you'd be cutting with this corner rather than all the way across the face of the mill. So you need to have a tram. Similarly, if you were drilling and the head is not squared up, the drill is coming down like this as you drill and you would get an enlarged hole. Of course, that's a great exaggeration. In order to tilt the head, you need to loosen one, two, three, four nuts but not very loose. They should remain snug and then with your wrench on this bolt you're able to tilt it. That's uh, a worm up there. So I will not be showing that as I uh, adjust the head I will be concentrating on the indicator. Many people do not realize that you can also square up the head using a precision square against these two surfaces that I have put a little orange sticker on. I'll take those stickers off now just to, to show you. But moving the square across the table, watch the blade now, up against this and this point, you can square it and get it pretty darn accurate. You can use feeler gauges here or here also to double check that. That can be done in the nodding position in this direction as well. But you need a precision square when you do that, not a carpenter square. But that's not what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use an indicator. These edge technology indicator holders can hold indicators in two different ways. One, and by the way, I added this thumb screw here. There was a set screw in there. I prefer this for quick removal. But there's a hole here that holds a standard 532nd stem, and that's pretty handy. You can also hold your indicator if it has a dovetail, and this one has three dovetails, one here, here, and then the one that's being held. 
you can see the dovetail holder right there. So we can use these either way. There are scores of different kinds of test indicators. I would avoid the kind that reads in a tenth of a thousandth. It may just be confusing, but this rather small faced one here made by Mitotoyo is a nice one with a stem and it also has adapters for dovetails. But I particularly like this one because it just reads in thousands, although the face is relatively small. Now the other one here, a Tessa, reads in half thousands, but it's a much larger dial. So I'll be using both of these. You can also use last word indicators. Some people tram the vise. This is a 5 inch vise, but if you have a 6 inch vise such as a Kurt, you can tram the vise itself using the Pro Tram or this type of uh, indicator holder. And uh, Edge Technology also produces a mini Pro Tram that is even ideal, they say, for uh, smaller milling machines, mini mills. But I'm going to take the vise off and I'm going to tram the table rather than the vise. You can set the indicator holder such that you're really uh, tramming a large radius. For instance, that's about uh, seven or eight inches there. So, and that's probably more than you need. I'm going to shorten it up here just a little bit so it fits in the camera frame. Frame, and even at that, I'm almost six inches for a total of 12 inches as I swing this around from one side to the other. It is necessary that you have your table clean of all chips and also if you have any high spots, that is you got nicks and raised spots, you need to stone your table but that should be done from time to time anyway. Be careful not to break off the tip or damage the tip of your indicator as you swing this in the T-slots. So you either need to lift this up a little bit as you rotate it or I sometimes use a ruler or a piece of paper which you'll see here momentarily. In order to not damage the tip as I swing this, although we have a bit of a chamfer here, it's nice to take a piece of paper like this and that allows you to swing it off and then similarly as you come back on on the other side use the paper. Just an idea. I really like the joints on this product because they are easy to move but yet they stay where you put them. Some people use a pair of uh, parallels that have no holes in them, matched parallels, to do this. Again your table must be clean or you get a false reading and you can bring it around like that. That way you don't have to worry about the T-slots. Again, that's just an idea I'm throwing out. This is the indicator holder with a 3 8 shank being held in a 3 8 collet. Now zeroing in just a little bit here, I am touching the table and I'm going to raise the knee until I bring it to zero. Now I'll swing this around to the other side and see what the reading in is. And of course the idea here is that we need the exact same reading here as when I swing it around to the other side. You cannot see it. I'll bring the camera around, but it's just a few thousandths off, not very far off, and that was by using the square method on those lugs up on the head. And you need to check this from time to time because for no given reason, sometimes the head tilts just a little bit from heavy cuts and other uh, abuse that might take place on a machine. So you can see that I'm, what, uh, almost four thousandths off. So now off camera I'm going to loosen those four nuts on the front of the head. And I like to use this big breaker bar with a three quarter inch socket. So they are just slightly loose. Not so that the head can wobble and now I have the wrench on the worm up there that I showed you and I'm going to try to split the difference here. 
I always end up by going the wrong way first. That's wrong way Corrigan. So repositioning the wrench. I'm going to bring it right into that position. Zero out. Swing it around and see what I get on the other side. I'm back around on the other side. I'll take the paper out of there, zero in just a little bit. And you can see I've got a little bit of a reflection there that I'm really spot on now. And so it was that simple. I must emphasize now that I was turning the, uh, the belt pulley on the top. And since I really don't like to stick my hands in there, I have unplugged, that is, I have removed the power from this machine. You absolutely do not want to turn the switch on when you have an indicator in there. You will hurt yourself and certainly break the indicator. So now I'm going to tighten up those four bolts and I'm going to watch this as I do it because sometimes there's a little movement. So I have the wrench on there and I'm snugging up one like I'm tightening the head on an engine and I have tightened all four of them and it did not move and then I'll swing this around and take yet one more reading to make sure nothing has moved and then the head is trammed in and of course you don't have to use paper I just do that and it is right on it would be nice to have two cameras when I do this so the head is trammed perfectly from right to left and then I would do the same thing with nodding and I'm not going to show that so now let's move on to the next possibility my Bridgeport 5 inch vise has keys on the bottom so I'll flip it over, mount it and see how accurate that it truly is. Make sure your vise is clean and your table is clean when you mount your vises. This is a stare at last word dial indicator or test indicator I should say. And notice how I have shortened up the whole indicator holder here but of course this is held with a 5 30 seconds peg in the holder and that peg could just as well be held in a collet or a drill chuck it doesn't really matter and you need to make sure that your fixed jaw and you always want to indicate off of your fixed jaw does not have any high spots so stone that if necessary and since there are plenty of uh, grooves and nicks and damage to this fixed jaw, what I sometimes like to do is to mount a parallel in there and then I will do the indicating over the parallel. That's the way a lot of people do it. You see the advantage of using this type of indicator holder is that your table may be dropped way way down and you don't want to raise the table up so you've got the reach with this. It's just that I have the table in the upper position right now so bringing the quill down or raising the table whatever you want to do I will bring the indicator tip up against that parallel which is just snugged up in the vise until I have it on zero and then just run it from one end to the other and we'll see how far off we are if at all. I think I'll adjust that using the cross feed. And surprisingly I am about three or four thousandths off. Now there isn't any way to correct that other than to take the keys off of the bottom. So that's just some inherent problem with this vise and I'm not worried about that. I'm going to show you another way of doing that with another vise so that we get it perfectly on zero. This is a 5 inch brown and sharp vise. Notice that it has no provisions for using keys. It's just strictly flat on the bottom. 
So I'll clean that off real well. Clean the table. And we'll mount this and indicate it. But it will be free to swing. There are almost endless possibilities and different ways of doing things in the machine shop. So much of it up to your own imagination and creativity. But what I've done here is put the brown and sharp vise in the, the lengthways direction and I'm going to use two bolts uh, here to fasten it down. Again, no keys. This one is snugged up. The other one here is loose. And I am able to pivot or swing the vise on this one. Well, I'll initially square it up using an angle block up against this surface here of the table. This little bit out of the of the uh, camera range here and then a uh, brown and sharp square and I'm bringing that up against the fixed jaw and swinging the vise until it appears to be square. That's pretty good. Now I will snug this and we'll check it with the indicator and correct it. I'm sure it will need some correction. All right, you see the setup now? And I'll run the indicator right across the jaw this time because it's in pretty good condition, the fixed jaw. I don't see much damage there at all. And with the cross or the longitudinal feed, I'm bringing it into zero. You could turn the face of the indicator also. And then I'll just, with the y-axis, run it across and see how far off we are. And it's about four thousandths. So using a brass wrap here, I will just tap the vise into about, uh, well, I'll split the difference there and see how it looks. I'll adjust the zero and run it back across. And I am within a half a thousandth. I will tighten both bolts and always check it again after you tighten the T-slot bolts just in case it has moved a little bit. There's a little deflection here in the middle so that jaw may not be perfectly straight. But for all intents and purposes, this vise is indicated in to close to perfection. And it would be ready to use. So that's how you indicate a vise in on the Bridgeport mill or any other milling machine for that matter. Well that completes part one of this video on using the indicators on the Bridgeport Mill. I'll see you soon in part two. This is Tubal Kane.